Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cam Channel. This is Xue Hang. Today, I'm going to show you some brief information about the charge transfer. The charge transfer is a very important process for the energy storage. I will follow the idea of a review article published very recently on current opinions on electrochemistry by Dr. Victoria Nikitina. The full reference of this paper is given in the video description as well as at the end of this video. The intercalation process involves two major tra transfer processes. The first one is the transfer of an electron from the current collector to the redox active side of the electrode active material. The second one is the transport of electrolyte from the bulk solution into the intercalation host. The charge transfer rate is determined by the ratio between the two processes. The slower one is the rate determining step. There are two easy ways to tell the rate determining step. For the well studied materials such as lithium cobalt oxide, lithium manganese oxide, and vanadium oxide. The first one is to change the concentration of the ions in the bulk solution. Kobayashi and Yushimoto found that the resistance for high and medium frequency, R1 and R2, in lithium magnesium oxide all decreases when the concentration of ions in the bulk electrolyte increases. The sharp dependence of charge transfer resistance on the lithium ion concentration suggests that the ion transport instead of the electron transfer is the rate determining factor. The second way is to vary the type of solvent and addictive. That is because the choice of the solvent and addictives decide the products of the electrolyte decomposition reactions, and hence the composition of the solid electrolyte interface, the SEI layer on the electrode. In the case when there is no SEI layers are present at the electrode surface, the charge transfer resistance should be lower. Here on our lithium cobalt oxide electrode, the ECDEC -E solvents seem to have a larger resistance than that in the water, presumably because there is no SEI layers formed in the aqueous based electrolyte. Again, the profound impact of the charge transfer resistance by changing the solvent supports that the ion transport is the rate limiting factor. Based on the result, in order to increase the charge transfer rate, we should mainly focus on assisting the ion transport. So let's take a close look at the ion transport process. Assume we have an oxide host and the lithium ion will intercalate the oxide from the bulk organic electrolyte. In this case, a layer of SEI layer will be formed on the electrode surface. The ion intercalation or ion transport process is quite complicated and involves several steps. First, ion diffusion in the electrolyte. Second, ion dissolution in the vicinity of the SEI layer. The third step, ionic migration through the surface layers. Step four, ion sorption at lateral surface or the formation of the so-called iodine. Step five, surface diffusion of a dion. Step 6, charge transfer across the SEI layer. And step 7, ion solid state diffusion in the host lattice. Equivalent circle was proposed to quantify and simplify this complicated process. The first one is the blue and study model. The model focused on two major steps of ion transport. First, the step 2 and step 4 is combined to represent the charge transfer that occurs before the intercalation of cation. And the subsequent step involves the surface diffusions of the adion and its cooperations into the lattice. They suggest an equivalent circle that the inner circle consists of the resistance of ion intercalation into the lattice, the R lattice the absorption of pseudocapacitive CS and constant phase angle impedance to describe the inhomogeneity of composite electrode. 
whereas the rest part are added, including the charge transfer resistance, the double layer capacitance, and the Verbeck diffusional impedance. If you are interested to learn more about this Verbeck impedance, you can watch our tutorial 18. So in this uh, equivalent circle, the CS can be obtained from the lower frequency semicircle on Nyquist plot, and the CDL is obtained from the higher frequency semicircle in the Nyquist plot. The second model is more common and simpler. The process is also simplified into two major steps, the dissolution and absorption. The model leads to a well-established scheme for extraction of the charge transfer rates from the experimental data. The charge transfer resistance is the semicircle at the median frequency. They are observed to be potential dependent. The value of the charge transfer resistance follows the wattner volmer type of potential dependence, whereas the surface layer resistance, RSL, corresponds to the higher frequency semicircle and reflects the resistance and capacitance of the surface layer. Instead of potential dependent, the RSL is solvent dependent. The higher frequency semicircle disappears in aqueous solution and become larger when the SCI thickness increases. If you have any questions regarding how to read the Nyquist plot, you can review it in our tutorial 6. It is usually difficult to obtain the charge transfer rate experimentally. That is because the step of the charge transfer is often screamed by the inevitable diffusion limitations. And there is a necessity to address phase transformation kinetics. The electromaterial frequently undergo phase transitions during electrochemical intercalation with rate determining nucleation and growth steps. From the previous slides, we already know that the Nyquist plot yielded from the impedance test can help us obtain the charge transfer rate by building simplified equivalent circle. However, the choice of the equivalent circle is really straightforward, especially for new materials. Alternatively, we can estimate the activation energies for charge transfer. The activation energy Ea is estimated from the temperature dependence of the interfacial charge transfer resistance. Smaller Ea value can always be observed in aqueous electrolyte compared to the organic electrolyte. That could result from the fact that the columbic repulsion at the interface is largely suppressed by the screening effect of hydration. We may turn this channel only on the weekends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. The video in our ECAM channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.